I'm playing Rob Benedict. Bradley is heavy. How are we doing in the Mile High City? Put us on oxygen behind the backstage there. I have that on the account. We have this effect. Yeah. 
things that, that put some, you know, solutions to maybe problems that the production is running into, or if, if a director is having problems blocking the scene out, or if the actor is having problems getting a, a line to, to resonate or something. I'm, I, I have a lot of, like, practice with that, so, um, so I, am, I am being utilized as a really uh, effective tool on these new sets, um, which is humbling and, and gratifying all at the same time. Um, but also, I, I find myself having to bite my lip a lot. <laughs> and going like... <laughs> and on that point, um, I imagine with the Winchesters and Walker and Walker Independence, there are certain things that producers could say to us back when we were doing the shows before the shows were currently that we're not really allowed to say these days. Like you can't say like, hey, buck up, like come on, we're gonna get through the day, because then it's considered like bullying because of our position. And so whereas I, when I was in my teens and twenties and early thirties, I wanted someone like you never you never know what everybody else has seen. So if you're in a certain mood or coming uh, to set uh, uh, prepared, you kind of need to be like, hey, dude. and he and I would have each other all the time. Uh, but we also have producers and directors who would also go like, hey man, like we got a big day tomorrow, so I want to make sure that you come in tomorrow more prepared than you were today because there were some fumbles and it cost us an hour on set. We're not necessarily allowed to say that right now because it seems like coercion. Or, you know, so it, there's a fine line right now, and I think it's 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 for a good reason, you know, that the our culture is kind of learning to be more compassionate with other people, and that's wonderful. Um, but sometimes you gotta get the job done, and I'm not really allowed to say, like, hey, show up on time. Because then it's like, the producer's bullying me. Like, I just said show up on time. <laughs> and that hasn't happened. I'm, I'm very fortunate on Walker, and we're, we're very fortunate on Wendy also. That we'd like you, we'd like to encourage you yeah. to, to consider being here on time <laughs> as an option. <laughs> No pressure. You, you, you do you. But I'm talking with help a lot. Or not. Did you imagine Foxy? You're trying to say that to us? <laughs> so I had a conversation with our, with our director uh, on, on Big Sky, who uh, loved the human. Um, and he, he came up and he was trying to give me uh, a note. And, you know, he was. He was very eloquent and was, you know, kind of giving me this, you know, uh, uh, a scenario or, or talking about a, um, you know, some sort of uh, um, story that was really, he was just trying to say, hey, give me a better take. <laughs> <laughs> and so I pulled him aside later and I was like, hey, um, you, you can just tell me Should to be, be better. <laughs> <laughs> say faster. Say, I don't know, that didn't work. Do anything else, because yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that we were used to getting from from Bob Singer and from Man. Steve Boyle and Kim Manners and John Showalter and Phil Sarisha and all of these guys that, that were that really kind of shaped the way that we work on a set. And it was it was a no BS, get the job done. We're you know we're, we're here. Uh, um, Everybody is here trying to get try to make this product the best it can be. Uh, let's not let's not fumble that football. Let's keep let's keep driving it home. And it was this kind of old school mentality. I mean, Bob would just come up and be like, "That sucked." <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know what you're doing, but be better than that. I'd be like, "Copy, thanks, Bob." <laughs> gotcha. And then and then it got to a point where Bob didn't even have to say anything. He would just walk on set and be like, "Got it." Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so one more? Got it. Okay. Yeah. Just better. Um, yeah, just better. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm starting to, and, and, and now like I think the directors are getting told like, hey, Jensen doesn't need uh, hand holding. If you want to do something, just tell him that he'll do it, or he'll tell you why he won't. And so, so that's uh, that's it's it's interesting to see that there there's a lot of people out there that aren't like you and I. And, and having to, um, and, and having, giving them the space to go through their process and how they approach a the scene and how they want to take notes. I mean, just the other day, uh, somebody gave a note to one of the other actors on set and it, it kind of deflated the scene and, and then the actor was in their head and, 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 and 
it was, I could just see, I was like, oh, that was, I, I understand the note, but that was the wrong delivery. And everybody's different, everybody has their, their way of, of getting to the, you know, from point A to point B, but um, it is unique now being in the position that I'm in, in these new shows, to see uh, how different it is out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's made me appreciate what we had. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. You don't have to stand up. You can lay down on the ground if you want. <laughs> Take a knee. Whatever. You can the entire time. Hi. So, while I'm trying to work my question, I love you guys. Um, and I'm... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excellent question. Um, um, so, my question is, in the finale, we find out Dean waited a long time outside Sam's apartment. Were there other times while Sam was at Stanford where he almost dropped in, but backed out? But now that John was missing, he had what he felt was a good reason for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you wait or not? <laughs> did you miss a tip to visit me? It's in college, come on. Yeah, I did, and then I got distracted by the college girls. <laughs> He's no dummy. What are you doing here? Oh, my brother is not just visiting my brother. Is he know you're here? Sure. But what's your name? Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, let's go in the back. About far back, flat shirt. Yeah. Flat shirt. Not all front. This is my first convention. I'm so excited. Oh, no. Okay. Anybody else in this Wow. Wow. That's what you guys did. On stream. So, I am so sorry if you have been asked this question before, but again, my first convention. I need to know the origin story of Scooby Natural. How did that happen? Like, where was the discussion? Where, like, where did the idea come from? It was an amazing crossover. I love that. I remember. Yeah. 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 And, um, I believe it was from the Scooby Riders. Yeah. They were big. They had a big fan of Supernatural, and they were like, "This is very similar uh, uh, formula here." Uh, I mean, it's. It, you got a Scooby game that solves a mystery every week, and then you got uh, two brothers who essentially solve a mystery every week. So I think it was uh, it was it was kind of a an obvious marriage to them. Uh, yeah, and they, they worked for Warner Brothers still. Right, it still was all in house uh, studio wise and stuff. So I think they brought uh, they brought the idea to Andrew Dab, who, who was our showrunner at the time. He was like, well, yeah. He was like, um, I think he said yes before they. Even before they even got the whole thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, like, yes. Uh, and that's that's kind of how it happened. And then you know we we got the call. They were like, hey guys, we have a crazy out of the box idea. We're like, yes. Yes. Because <laughs> that's one thing with Supernatural that I don't think you can say about many many shows at all is that we took chances. Yeah. We all was. Yeah. And it was because of No matter how high we jumped over the shark, you guys stuck with us. <laughs> Rob, Robbie, uh, Robbie Thompson said he's like, he's like, you don't jump the shark if you never come down. <laughs> and I don't think we ever came down. So thanks for keeping us up.
uh, is death in the script. Which he is, I'm not going to show his couch. Oh, uh, uh, no. No, no. <laughs> no, but Dick Roman's back. Leviathan's <laughs> in there too? I mean, if there was one thing to leave out, maybe we could have left out the well, uh, that's, um, I, I know that there are discussions about what, uh, what the future of, of Supernatural uh, is going to look like, um, and I know that uh, you and I have talked about it, and there are a few people discussing about what it's going to look like when the boys put their boots back on, um, so maybe there, there might just be some of that in there. One more thing, what? I also have a tibia tattoo of you guys. Let me see. What is, what is it? It's called the Winchester Brothers, Sam Dean, Jack, and Castiel. Oh, there we go. Thanks, man. How are you doing? You with the green and the red. <laughs> Yes. I did want to ask you, um, for you and Dean, are you easily impressed or easily amused? I would, I would probably say amused. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I would probably. There's much more in a day-to-day -day basis where I'm like, <laughs> than I am. That's why I'm used in the first place. Thanks. 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 Yeah. And speaking of which, I, can I tell you a joke? Yes. If it's better than yes. it is. Because I did write it. So, I'm not a felon, but I am felon adjacent. That just means I've never been caught. I didn't marry a felon, though, so I do have some felon in me. There was a little felon. Whose joke is better? Thank you. I don't even know if that was a joke. Um, I think it was just an admission. Uh, okay, on that note, we're gonna, we're gonna exit stage right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you. Thank you.